In this Silk Central Getting Started video, we're going to look at reviewing the test execution information and the dashboard report. When you log into Silk Central on the dashboard, you'll be presented with various information. You can customise this information relevant to you by adding panels. Within the panels, there'll be a wealth of information requirements, tests, issues, and different metrics that are relevant. Each of these panels, you'll be able to choose the project to which it displays information. Now to view a manual test result, we're going to go to the manual test assigned to me. And against this, we're going to look at the evaluation checklist. We're going to select the view manual test result icon to see the detailed insight. When we select this, it's going to go in and bring up information for the test cycle. Against the test cycle, we'll see that it will show information for each of the users assigned to that cycle. Under each user, you'll see the specific tests executed and assigned by those individuals. When you click on a test, you'll see a high level information as to the test, any issues that have been associated to the test before it then seeing and showing the detailed information at a step level. Step one, we can see past. We can see that an attachment was associated to that test. And if we clicked on that attachment, it would show us the screenshot. On step two, we can see that we've associated an issue and that's issue 27. And because these are blue and hyperlinked for the attachments, I can click on that and open that up. Now with a defect, it's gonna require you to log into the defect tool of choice. So whichever tool it is, use your relevant username and password. Once I've logged in, and in this case into Silk Central, I'm now gonna be able to see the description. It'll show me a link to the test and the test run. So from a development point, I can access the information. I'll have other tabs with additional information and it will show me what step it was failed at and any information passed across. At the top I've just selected cannot fix and this allows it to move through the defect workflow. When I open up a status it's going to then say we'll put a reason in as to why you're transitioning through the workflow. At the bottom in this example I can then say well I checked it in a specific build and version. Once I select OK we'll see it move from dev ready to QA ready. Now what we'll be able to do is when we go back to the dashboard, we'll then be able to go into the assigned issue table. And this is a panel which I've added to the dashboard. If you don't see it, then just add it to your screen. In here, I can see all of the defects that have been raised against my project. Within here, I can customize the level of the information by dragging and dropping the fields to order how I see the information. So I've just moved created by to earlier on. I can do a drop down on a field and I can indicate I want a filter or in this case I'm removing a filter of QA against status. What I can also do is I might want to view my status in groupings. So I'll do a drop down on status and select group by field. When I do group by field it's now going to group all my statuses. So here I've got a status of close that I can just quickly minimise and then just view information for the other statuses. Now I may want to just view information relevant to me. So what issues have I created? So I can do a drop down then on my created by and on my created by I can select a filter and type my name into the filter. So in this case I'm going to type admin as I'm logged on as admin. Only information in created by that includes the word admin will then be displayed. Here I can see issue 27, which shows a dev ready state, and that's just because the issues haven't just been updated yet. So once the issues have automatically been updated and it just refreshes in the system, show the latest status. What I can then do is I can then select against the execution evaluation checklist to actually go view the test. So let's select go view test in the test pane and that will open up that test within the test window. In the test window, it will directly take me to the test. I'll see at a property level, high level information and results. I'll be able to see what execution run it went against and who executed it and when. I'll then be able to see step information, the parameters that we use, any associated requirements, etc. But the two things I'm interested in is going to be my runs and my issues. On the runs, again, it will show me who executed it and I could click on this to drill down to information. 
under issues I'll be able to see the issue that was raised and it's the external ID 27 which I talked about and I can see the synopsis here it shows the status of dev ready just as the system hasn't refreshed once I do select update issue status it'll then run the schedule and just update the information and it's now moved to QA ready What I can then do is I may choose to raise a new issue against the test rather than against an execution. So that means it would be raised direct against the test without an execution run associated. And again, it will present you with the choice of profile where you choose the tool that you raise it in. Or I can assign an existing issue which will just require me to enter my issue number. What I'm now going to do is, we've been talking in the detailed view for a test. Let's actually move to the document view, which I'm just going to select. And the document view is a good way to provide high level overview of what's happening within your tests. Depending on the folders that you've got expanded, it will depend on how data has been rolled up. Here I can see the bottom two, I have my bottom evaluation demo folder expanded which shows one test and I can see that that test has failed and I can see against that folder one test failed I can see that I have one issue raised against that and if I'd expanded some of the folders further up I'd be able to see the information as you hover over it it'll give you more insight so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to my requirements pane and within my requirements pane whereas previously we talked on the details let's also then move into the document view. Within the document view I'm then going to be able to see high level traceability as to my requirement coverage and my test coverage. So here in my evaluation requirement I can see that I have coverage against my requirement even though it's a fail and I can see there's one test which is covering providing that coverage and depending on the folder you expand you'll see the information and again hover over it and it will provide some insight as to what's passed what's failed if I expand order management you can see I've got three tests under that and at the order management level I can see three not executed one failed and in test coverage I'll see the associated information now I want to generate a report so I've selected my PDF button I can now choose to open that in Adobe or save it to file what will happen at this point is it will generate a PDF document which I can email or I can print so it's a good way of sharing information go back to our dashboard. Within our dashboard as I've mentioned we see a wealth of information across tricks and analytics. Here I'm looking at my test cycle progress for my demo project for test cycle 4. You can see the test cycle started on February 11th and was due to complete on the 18th so it will show information relevant to the start and end date for that cycle. If your testing is continued past that unless you modify your test cycle information won't be shown. We're also now looking at the planned versus actual and this shows when you captured your planned time against your test it will reflect the actual time taken as you executed your test. We have a high level planning view show the different cycles against a timeline as to what's executed when. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new panel in. I'm going to add my requirement coverage status panel in my dashboard. I'm going to select the project which is my demo project panel will now appear at the bottom of the window. If I hover over different items I can see the number that have failed, not executed and passed. Now if I want to see detailed insight I'm going to select the go to requirement document view to see detailed insight. That was the view we just talked about.